Hey everybody, um, what, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, those of you who uh, normally see my videos know I normally do the Emacs thing and uh, as I always say when I do non-Emacs videos, I want to get back to doing more Emacs videos. I'm just kind of stuck on topics right now. But what I wanted to talk about today was um, this little uh, project that I discovered last year called Thani. Um, and it's a Python IDE for beginners. You can see right over here at Thani.org. And it's a really nice little package. Um, I discovered it last year, um, but I discovered it a little bit too late in the semester um, to really have a chance to explore it and use it with my kids, um, with my students, and so I put it on the back burner until this year. Uh, it's funny that I discovered it and it was too late, and then um, somewhere on one of my videos or on my blog, uh, uh, I got some comments, oh, you should check out Thani, or maybe it was on Reddit, um, and indeed I wanted to, um, but I really, again, I couldn't do it then um, with my class uh, because we were already, they had already started using another tool, um, which was also a good tool, uh, and it just didn't make sense to uh, shift midway. Um, but anyway, this year I'm playing with Thani for my beginning um, uh, programming class using Python, and it's really nice, and I highly recommend it. And so let's take a look at some of this. So installation is really easy, at least for Linux. You can download it. Um, I already downloaded it, so that's the second copy. And then to install it, couldn't be easier. Uh, you'll notice I don't have any Thani clicky thing here, but if I just do bash and then the downloaded file, I will install it. Just takes a little bit of time. And um, then it just says here how we can uninstall it. We can either run it with Holmes, Amansky, Apps, Thani, Bin Thani, or we can um, then uninstall it here with this. Of course, this will be your directory rather than mine. So we're good there. And you'll notice that I now have my little Thani thing here, or I can run it from the terminal. Um, I'm also going to just get rid of the Thani, dot Thani directory. That's the, um, I already ran this uh, and installed it before. I forgot to get rid of this directory. I'm just gonna get rid of it so it looks like a totally fresh install. And then running it, we can just you know click on this and you don't see this because it happened on the other window. It installs its own Python 3 virtual environment. And I'm hoping this is big enough. Maybe I should make the font a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, what you'll notice is it installs Python 3 in a virtual environment, so you'll get Python 3, and that's really nice if your students are using different environments. So, so we've got this nice little, uh, we're here, so we can start typing, you know, A equals 10. Ah, I can't type. Print A, you know. Uh, we'll have to save this, so let's give it um, Thani demo.py we run it and all is good so we can run that um, we've got some windows here we can look at variables so a is 10 you know a equals 20 let's run this again Ooh, cool um, let's see other things we can look at we can look at our code outline there's not a whole lot there but we'll come back to that in a second um, object inspector where we're not going to look at all of this yet I'm just bringing up some of these windows um, but the nice thing is we do get our little REPL down here and we can start typing in here so um, and notice that we go over the A for the variable and here are all our instances of A that's kind of nice um, we can do things like define a function let's define a function called uh, I don't know um, add to A and B notice that um, we get in our outline add to um, return a plus b and of course this is not going to run um, we have an error in here we get the error you know the normal stuff which is all pretty nice um, we can run this and then of course in the REPL add to three and four nothing is really new and earth shattering here but let's do um you know add to twice a, B, and why don't we say C equals add to A, B, and just notice how I'm doing this. I mean, I'm not writing anything fancy, return C plus D, I, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. But again, notice we have our outline, um, you know, we have these here, notice our variables. Um, so if we run this again, and notice that add and add, add to and add to twice, they're variables and we can inspect them and look at them. So if you do want to dive a little bit more deeply into 
um, you know, how functions are represented and what they are and things like that. You can certainly do that. Um, and of course, we have our own variables down here, like A equals 20, B equals 30, C equals add to twice A, B. And notice, you know, again, nothing's in our outline. We run this. Do we run this? We run this. And we have our variables, you know, so that's all really nice. We have our REPL. So everything looks pretty cool. Um, but what I like about this is um, when we start using the debugging tool. So we can run the current script with F5. We can, can control F5 to go into the debugger. But notice what we get here. If we, um, and now our, we have F6 to step over and F7 to step into. And I'm, actually, I'm going to make a change before we do this. Let's stop this and let's do add twice of a plus five. And you'll see what we're doing this in a minute. So let's run the debugger, control F5, or I'll just keep the stroke. And now we're going, and again, we can just use step over and step into, let's just start hitting F7. So notice that it's going through the defines. And so you can show how it's actually defining the functions as you're doing this, which is kind of nice. It's not just this mystery they exist, but it also shows like, okay, add two hasn't been defined, now it is. Now we have add two, and you can see up here this happening. We make our variable, and notice it evaluates to 20. It evaluates to 20 again. It's about, notice how it's at A plus 5, A is 20, 20 plus 5, and each time I'm hitting this key, 25, it's showing you all the evaluation. This is a lot more in, in detail than most evaluations, most, um, most debuggers that I've seen that are made for, not for showing and for teaching, but for debugging. And this is really nice from a point of view of having students see how things work. So now notice what happened when we called add to twice, it brought up another window with its own variables. That's a really nice feature. And it's doing the same thing again, and now it brings add to. And so it really, students can see this call stack develop just by tracing through the program. So all of this, it's, it's just very seamless, really nice. We return from there, we go to the next add to, it's doing the substitutions in here, calls another window, etc. Really nice, really clean. Where am I? I oh, wait, okay. We're almost done here. And then we come back, you know, etc. So really, really, really nice to show students what's going on. Um, and you know, the nice thing about that popping up those windows, as I showed, um, you know, like one called functions, that really becomes nice with things like recursion. So if we have a little factorial routine, and let's say uh, if n is greater than one, return of n times fact n minus one, else return one. And then let's print uh, result equals fact of four. We're not going to do the whole thing. And if we start debugging this, and so let's do F8. Actually, we didn't want to do that, sorry. <laughs> didn't want to run all the way through. Uh, so F7. So fact four. And now this is fact four, and then we run this. It does, you know, it's going through it step by step. I'm just going to quickly hit this. But then that calls fact three, which then calls fact two. And again, all of these windows are up, each with their own variables. Makes it really easy to show what's going on, the call stack and all that. Base case, it returns. You know, it returns, and you can see each level. Really, really, really nice. Um, so another nice feature. So another thing we can do is we can also look at things. Um, let me exit from the debugger, and let's I'll just comment those out. Let's make a, a list. So list one, list two equals list one, and let's run this. And notice that we have both of these. And if we say, let's say, uh, L1 append 6, they both get the 6. Why? Because they're referring to the same list. And that can be kind of hard for kids to understand and see. Um, and in fact, even if we say something like, let's say, def add to list L1 value, and let's say, um, I mean, I know this is not how you code this, but Again, I would not want to write this, but I'm just showing the features of Fani here. Um, but let's uh, let's say we can do add to list L1 100. Um, 
and notice it's all the same there. But um, if we look here on another window, the heap, where do we find this? Is it in here? It should be in here somewhere. Let's actually, let's, let's start stepping through this. And let's actually we'll just step over this just to show. Um, but here is a memory for the list, um, OX7F489, you know, whatever, the memory address here, makes it a bit bigger. And we also have that as the memory address for L1 and the memory address for L2. So then you can see, oh, look, it points to the same thing. So it really lets you, and again, you don't have to show all of this with your students, but it really lets people drill down and see what's going on, a little bit under the hood, see the relationships, really, really, really nice tool. So, um, you know, I'm still an Emacs guy and I do all of my Python development in Emacs, all my work in Emacs, and I think that that's a great tool to graduate to when you're finished with Thani. But if you're uh, learning Python for the first time or you're teaching Python to beginners, I strongly recommend that you, you check out this tool. I'm really, really liking it. Okay, that's it for today.